Excuse me, are you with the press? And you with police, if I'm not mistaken. I see there is no need to pretend anything. So I suppose you will not mind several questions, will you? Of course not. What are you doing here so early in the morning? There's nothing strange about it. I'm working on an article about the funeral of Sir William which took place yesterday. You know, the noble man nicknamed Mad William or something. I bet I won't be the only journalist. Well, come here today, so I got up early. I suppose the family of the deceased is agreeable to that and that you have their consent? Inspector, I hope we two are not going to trespass upon each other's patch. Let me make it clear. I am no inspector, but I'm going to keep a close watch on you. You can count on that. And I'm prepared to pressure you, if it's necessary. I accept the challenge. It will be my pleasure to work with you. Not mine. Big-headed fool. Just wait, I'll show you. Did you know Sir William personally? No, we never met, thank God. Tell me, how can you write about someone you don't know? Inspector, everyone knew Sir William because of what he did during his life. I've talked to plenty of people who ran away from the horror. Trust me, the stories were terrible. Verified by whom? The horror of those people's eyes, Inspector. It will convince you more than anything else. This is leading nowhere. A prostitute in a church would be more credible than him. Sir, you have no business here, so please leave. Don't count on it. Have you ever seen a prison cell from the inside? I have. But don't get me wrong, it's nothing to shout about. Exactly. Is that supposed to be a threat? You can't arrest me. I'll do it. I'll complain. You can. I'm not gonna leave anyway. The public has a right to know what's going on. Hmm. He didn't, he didn't swallow, swallow the bait. bait. He's no amateur. Unfortunately, I have no reason to confiscate it. Do you know that man? I do, sir, unfortunately. Why the regret? His name is Nathaniel Forrest. He brings nothing but trouble. I don't know how it's possible, sir, but any time anything happens, he's there. He's like a pain in my neck, sir. Which newspaper does he write for? The Courier, sir. A local sheet, nothing special. He publishes a photograph, adds several pages of rubbish, and people swallow it. But in my opinion, sir, serious people never read anything like that. Once it'll be necessary to search the sewers, Sergeant Carter will finally be useful. Hmm, a reminder of the plague which befell Plymouth last century. What's this? I almost overlooked it. Interesting catch. I'll make some notes. Someone threw it away the night Sir William's body disappeared. It must have been so. Otherwise someone would already have picked it up. Sergeant, you told me you smoke sometimes. 
Yes, I'm partial to the odd smoke, sir. How much would this kind of cigarette cost? Oh, let me see. Well, hand rolled, that's nothing unusual. It depends on the tobacco, you know. Well, this one, for instance, smells very good. Why are you interested in it, sir? I found it near the column. It might have belonged to someone who knows what happened here. Really? How would you know that, sir? Because I doubt it would go unnoticed all day. And what would a typical resident of this district do if they were passing by chance and saw it lying there on the footpath? He would pick it up, sir. I see. So someone must have thrown it away tonight. Exactly. And it is more than probable that the person who threw it away knows what happened here. In that case, sir, I have such a theory, if it helps you, sir. Go ahead. No one rolls a cigarette in a hurry, sir. Uh, maybe in a pub or while one is waiting for someone, I guess it would be the latter case. It takes time to prepare the whole thing, sir. It's something like a ritual of killing time, sir. Not only time, Sergeant. Thank you for your remark. The mysterious smoker is slowly emerging. But if I really want to find him, I'll need more than one cigarette. Is it true, what's said about Sir William? You mean that Sir William was a beast and a monster? Yes, that is true. I must confess that I don't know what to think. Who of us is able to understand God's intention? But I am sure it was not God's will that he came into this world. What do you mean? When he was born, it was as if he wasn't one of God's creations. He had a totally lifeless face. And those eyes. Understand me, it is not easy to talk about it. I understand. Tell me, how did his family cope with it? It was very difficult, especially for his mother. She just could not bear it, and eventually the strain was such that she took her own life. We had to bury her on the Gallows Hill. Where is it? It is a place forgotten by God, a cemetery for suicides. And what about his father? He disappeared the night when all the servants left the mansion. And then... Only William remained with Lady Miriam, his grandmother. All this just because he had a disfigured face? No, of course not. When he grew older, strange stories began to be told about him. Once, it was a dead cat in his arms. Once, he was found sitting next to a dead horse. And whenever a maid disappeared, you can easily guess whose work it was said to have been. At that time, his father was still alive and kept the estate together, but that was not to last. The servants revolted, set the house on fire, and fled. His father vanished, and only ruins remained. A sad and tragic story. I'd like to know more. You must excuse me, detective, but there is nothing more to say. The coffin was closed during the whole funeral, is that right? Yes. By whose request? Lady Miriam, 
The grandmother of the deceased wished it so. That's suspicious, don't you think? I can't understand why. I think it might have already been empty before the funeral. Perhaps it was Lady Miriam's last attempt to protect her grandson. Everybody hates him and almost destroyed the family. If he disappeared, he would soon be forgotten about. Lady Miriam might have faked his death in the hope that is what would happen. I am sorry, but this seems rather far-fetched to me. The absolute isolation and the permanent fear of discovery would be worse than a prison sentence. You're right. But people sometimes do desperate things when they have no other choice. It's possible that those delinquents tried to break into the church. Perhaps the gravedigger tried to stop them, and so they killed him. But what do the destruction of the tomb and disappearance of the body have to do with it? It can be a provocation, or a camouflage. They try to put us off the scent. I cannot believe it. We're at the very beginning of the investigation. It's my duty to examine every possibility. If I can help with anything, I am at your service. In that case, I would like to ask you to check the church inventory, just in case something is missing. Yes, that is a good idea. At least I can make myself useful. If you find something out and I'm not here anymore, send a message to the station. You can rely on me, detective. God bless you. I have no reason to go in yet. The journalist finally gave up, but there's still a strange feeling in my stomach. I see Mr. Forrest gave up. Well, sir, I would think so, only if I didn't know him. What do you mean? It wouldn't be in his character to leave so easily, sir. What else could he do, in your opinion, if you know him so well? I didn't worry as long as I had him in my sight, but now he might have found another way in. I can watch over the main gate, but the cemetery is too large. I would just like to remind you, sir, that I wanted to go to the station for support. Thank you for the reminder, but don't worry about that. As for the journalist, he surely realized that it's useless. If you think so, sir, you are the detective. There's just something about it. It's really dubious that he would give up so easily. Blasted grave digger.